<laughs> Not just the Mercy Watchers, but everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Richard Ludwig from the University of St. Thomas in Houston, Texas. And today I'm in beautiful Napa, California for the Napa Institute annual conference. And I have a special privilege because Elizabeth Sullivan has stopped by to talk with us about the Institute for Catholic Liberal Education. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, Dr. Ludwig. Welcome. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming having me. By. <laughs> Excellent. So why don't you tell me, tell us, right, um, about the organization and what it does. So the Institute for Catholic Liberal Education, the mission is basically to reclaim the church's tradition of education in the liberal arts and sciences. Uh -huh. To restore the unity of faith and reason from a child's earliest years. Uh -huh. So what we see is that the solution to the decline in Catholic education has been hiding in plain sight all along. It really is returning to the church's tradition. Uh -huh. We've been just cut off from that tradition and haven't realized it. So talk to us about why you think that's an important element for the church to reclaim the, the great tradition. I think there's a growing realization that the secular model of education has subtly undermined the faith of our children. Why is that? It's because it squeezes mystery and wonder out of learning. And so it subtly undermines the mysteries at the heart of faith, like the real presence of the Eucharist, for example, right, or yeah. the possibility of miracle or the power of prayer. Because the system, the dominant system we have now is pragmatic and utilitarian. Uh, it's overly obsessed with measurement. And there are things that you can measure <laughs> and there are things that you can't measure. Right. Well, you know, that, that, that brings to mind the notion of wonder, right? Wonderment. And, and how that is such a great force for creation, right? Creativeness and, and the ability to really connect the disconnected in some ways. Whereas um, w what you're su uh, suggesting here is that there is sort of this, this sense that there's always something that can be measured and put together and all that. And, and some people frame that as science versus non-science. And I think that is simply nonsense because <laughs> science again you know is a revelation from god and we understand so talk to us about that so because people think of liberal education sometimes they're like oh you know well that's that's that touchy feely stuff that doesn't really count talk to us about how that is a fallacy well first i want to address your point about wonder you know yeah. one of the things we what the, our work is mainly about forming educators because yeah. we think they need to be fed spiritually and intellectually yes. to uh -huh. continue growing in this noble profession and what we tell them is that saint thomas aquinas said that wonder is the first step that leads up the ladder to the beatific vision uh -huh. so that desire to know is ultimately a desire for god uh -huh. and Part of the tradition is the use of the seven liberal arts, which are the three arts of language and the four arts of number, uh -huh. which are really stem on steroids, right? So exactly. it's, it's through the quadrivium, we're able to have this privileged encounter with the order and beauty of the universe to see pattern and right. cr in creation. Uh -huh. and, and through language and story and pers the arts of persuasion and rhetoric, we're able to understand human nature for example. So it's a very complete education in literacy, uh -huh. numeracy, but also it feeds both the moral and the sacramental imagination. Yeah. So now the work that you do with educators, at what level are these educators? It's at, you know, K-12, higher education, all of the above? What is it? It's K-12 primarily. Uh -huh. um, we often think of the liberal arts at the college level. But this needs to begin with the youngest hearts and minds because sure. the world is a different place through the eyes of faith. And we want to develop, the, the focus is not so much just on the volumes of information to be transmitted, mm -hmm. but what is it, how do we understand the child as a human person created in the image and likeness of God? <laughs> and how do we cultivate that which is human in the child? Teachers who are called to a vocation in Catholic education long to make our Lord known, loved, and served. Yes. And when they are free from the, um, the minutia of, of complete emphasis on standards and measurement, and they're given some of the, this vision and then these tools, they feel free to really flourish 
and be more creative and responsive to the children in the classroom. So yes. you'll see a lot more discussion in these classrooms, uh -huh. lots of story, lots of debate, lots of seminar, all of these things. And it's very and, engaging. And doesn't that I, I would think it just has to feed the soul of the teachers, right? So they're going to do something they love, they find meaning in, right? And they're, they're, they're giving their gifts, right? They're, so, so talk to me about um, what feedback you get from those educators and, and how do they connect with you? Right at the yeah, it's very gratifying to see them so moved and inspired in their vocation. So uh -huh. that's the best thing about our job, <laughs> because we know that when that spark is set on fire in them, they have exponential impact on the students in their classrooms. Well, I I so want to thank you for the work that you're doing. The you know as someone who has four grandkids coming up. <laughs> We're really interested in how they are formed. And I think the work that you're doing and those that, that work with you are just tremendous. So thank you, Elizabeth, thank you for coming much. by and sharing thanks that with us. Thanks for the time and thanks for the good work producing wonderful grads at oh. USD. <laughs> thank you yes. so much.